and, and, and because they have a good return for their labor. And, and so we need each other. And the subtitle being the power to create change. And, and I don't know but about you, but at my age, I remember the old Peanuts cartoon. And y'all know Lucy. For those of you all who are at least my age, and Lucy walked into her brother's room one day, and she demanded that her brother, Linus, and y'all remember Linus, would change the TV channels. And then she threatened him with her fist if he didn't do it. Y'all know Linus. So, so, so Linus, being the Linus that he is, asked the question, what makes you think you can walk right in here and take over. And Lucy being the woman that she is, and she looks at Linus and says, these five fingers, said Lucy, individually they are nothing. But when I curl them together like this into a single unit, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. That's, that's Lucy, amen? And so Linus, being the Linus that he is, asked Lucy, what channel do you want? <laughs> so turning away, Linus looks at his fingers and, and he said, why can't you guys get organized like that? <laughs> and, and so my brothers and sisters, we need each other. Because you see, individually, we may not amount to much, but together, say together, together, together we form a formidable force. Because where there is unity, there is strength. Yeah, you with me. And so, as I looked at what I was going to preach about today, I, I looked at all the protests in our country, and I looked at our world as a president that was taking office just on Friday, and the protests that started on Friday and continued even through yesterday gives more credence if we look at it to the statement that we need each other. And in fact, the founding fathers of our country, when they created it, they started out with, we the people, which is an indication that we need each other. And so my brothers and sisters, if the protest and the inauguration of the president is not enough, when you look at recent events in this country that affect us, the killing of African-American men by police, the escalated killings of African-American men by those who are sworn to protect and defend, the killing of African-American men by African-American men, the proliferation of guns encouraged and allowed by activists reading an interpretation of the Constitution that was never intended by the writers of the Constitution. The killing of African American individuals in Charleston, South Carolina, who had gathered together in unity to study the Word of God and were gunned down by the very first person that they had lovingly invited in and finally, our current president, who was elected with meddling from a foreign country, and who was elected because by using fear, bigotry, hatred, bullying, and racism. And so when you look at all of this, things to some of us don't look too good. Is that right? And, and, 
And if because things don't look too good, we also don't feel too good, do we? And I can imagine that there's a feeling amongst us that things may be slipping away. And just a few weeks ago, Pastor Wood told us that when we need help to look to the hills from which cometh our help, because our help comes from the Lord. Do I have a witness in here? So anybody here this morning know that your help comes from the Lord? And so my brothers and sisters, we do know that our help comes from the Lord. But not only do we need help from the Lord, but we also need each other. Do I have a witness in here? And so I believe that we have this feeling that things may be slipping away because maybe some of us have been living a lifestyle that celebrates the power of one. That is, I is greater than we, or I is greater than us. And, and, and just a side note, in fact, I, I, I believe that with integration, that, 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 that we have been integrated into their ways to the detriment of our ways. I, 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 that's what I believe. You don't have to say amen, but... But, but, but I believe that we have lost more than we have gained. Because at least with segregation, we were taught our culture. At least with segregation, we were taught our successes. At least with segregation, we were taught who we are as a people. And at least with segregation, we were taught to be proud of who we are. And at least with segregation, we were taught the importance of family. And at least with segregation, we were taught the importance of needing each other. And I'm sorry if, if I spooked some folks this morning and, I, and I've come talking about segregation and integration, but it's the reality that we live in. But with integration, we may have obtained physical things, but we have been taught nothing about ourselves. We have been taught nothing about our culture, and we have been taught nothing about our family. But we have been taught everything about their culture, and we have been taught everything about their ways. Because when I attended a Martin Luther King service, Last Monday morning, about 6.30 in the morning up in Raleigh, there was a teacher who stood up and said, there are young people today that don't even know who Martin Luther King Jr. is. Now, y'all might be happy with integration, but that, spoke, that struck a nerve in my soul. And so, my brothers and sisters, in essence, what we've been taught is a life of oneness that says, I got mine, now you go get yours. Do I have a witness in here? And so, and so, and so, living a cultural life of oneness is dangerous to our community. It is dangerous to our country, and it is dangerous to our world. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, wars have been fought. Many have been killed. Many families have been destroyed. Many lives have been lost because of the culture of oneness. And so look around you, and you can see the culture of oneness. Some churches, more concerned about numbers, things, money, and the show than the souls, than relationships and community. I'm going to take my time this morning. Lack of empathy for the poor to the point that no one wants to advocate or support them. Lack of support 
for any activist who is fighting injustices that benefit all, us all for fear of what people may say or think. Lack of support for a program that is helping others, but because your church or your organization is not involved, you don't support it. Lack of those speaking out about the economic and technological suppression of people of color. Lack of commitment to marital partners. I'm talking about the culture of oneness. And individuals walking out, leaving a family created by two to survive with one. Only because of the culture of oneness. In other words, I is more important than us, and I is more important than we. The culture of oneness. And, and, and my brothers and sisters, maybe that's why we feel like things may be slipping away. But I come here today to tell you that we need each other. I don't understand how black folks who have been educated that will not and will not, not, will not consider anything of color when it comes to the education of their children. I'm talking about not consider it. I'm not talking about you have to go, but not even consider the HBCUs that raised and created the people who gave us our rights. I don't understand how we as a people who always look at the other man's ice as being more colder than our ice. I, I don't understand. And, and, and so my brothers and sisters, I've just, my soul just got touched with the inauguration of the man that we just got selected as a president. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, what I believe has happened in our community to some of us is that things have become more important than relationships. And, 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 and some of us, some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, are willing to let a disagreement about things that are temporal. Now, what you mean, preacher? Listen to me. You will let a disagreement about money. You will let a disagreement about your car. You will let a disagreement about your bank account. You will let a disagreement about your land cut off relationships. And, and I don't know about you, but I believe that relationships are much more important than money, cars, and land. Do I have a witness in here? Because you see, your car can fall apart and your money can dissipate. And when you get sick and get on your back, not your money, not your car, not your land can help you. It needs somebody else to walk into your life and provide a helping hand. Oh, I wish I had some help in this house. And so in other words, we have allowed temporal things to take priority over eternal things. But we must be mindful that it doesn't matter how much we have or how important we think we are. God himself directs us to have relationship with each other, doesn't he? And well, preacher, how does he know? You know he tells us that. Well, because he tells us to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, I got a Bible reading church with me this morning. Because to love, live otherwise is to live inconsistent with the way God designed and planned for us to live. And so here's what Paul Tripp says in his book, Whiter Than Snow. Meditations on sin and mercy. Listen to what he says. He says, 
We are created to be independent, autonomous. We are not created to be independent, autonomous, or self-sufficient. We were made to live in a humble, worshipful, and loving dependency upon God, number one, and in a loving and humble interdependency with others. Our lives were designed to be community projects. Yet, this is what he says, the foolishness of sin tells us that we have all that we need within ourselves. Hmm. So we settle for relationships that never go beneath the casual. We defend ourselves when the people around us point out a weakness or a wrong. And we hold our struggles within, not taking advantage of the resources that God has given us. That, that, that's what he says. And my brothers and sisters, the resource that God has given us is each other. <laughs> because you see, we were not created to live in isolation. In fact, Proverbs 18 and 1 says it like this. Whosoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, he breaks out against all sound judgment. That's what the book says. And my brothers and sisters, isolation from others is both selfish, foolish, and ungodly. So, so how many of you under the sound of my voice know that living in isolation is a dangerous thing? It, 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 it's dangerous because, because when you're living in isolation and you're going through your house and you fall over and don't have nobody to call, it is dangerous. Living in isolation is dangerous. Because we were never created to live alone. And those of you who started your year-long Bible study, Bible reading, you know you started out with the book of Genesis, right? And so in creation... The first thing God said was not good was the fact that man was what? Was alone. That, that, that's the first thing he said, and he said that it was not good. So when God created us, he created us for unity of community. Because scripture does not teach the power of one. It teaches that two are better than one, and which tells us that we need who? each other. That's right. Y'all hanging in there. And, and, and so Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9 that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. And so in other words, it don't matter if you are by yourself because when you're by yourself, ain't but so much you can produce. But when two of you get together, huh? You have a good return for your labor. Do I have a witness in here? Because one of you might get tired and faint, and the other one can pick up and keep on going. But when one of you by yourself and you stop and faint, guess what? Everything stops. So, so in other words, when more than one get together, there is power to be productive when we work together, okay? So, so when we unite for a common cause or a common purpose, there is power to bring about change. That, that's, all, that's all Solomon's saying when he says they have a good return for their labor, is that when two get together, there is power to create change. That's all he's saying. In fact, the Bible says that for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And who is this I that I'm talking about? I'm talking about God the Father. And my brothers and sisters, when God is in the midst, the impossible becomes possible. When God is in the midst, darkness can turn to light. When God is in the midst, defeat can turn to victory. When God is in the midst, death becomes life. 
so where there are two of us and we are needing each other and we come together for a common purpose or a common call, God is in the midst. He's in the midst. So in our family and in our community, in our state, in our country, and in our world, we face challenges. And of all of you all who observed or looked at or heard about the inauguration on Friday, you know that we have challenges. And we also not only will have challenges, but adversity is going to come. And when challenges come and when adversity come, it will place a strain on our relationships. But my brothers and sisters, even in the midst of the severest strain, but even in the midst of the challenges that are put on our relationships, we must remind ourselves that we're not in this by ourselves because we still need each other. And we must be unified in our efforts to face challenges in our church. We must be unified to face challenges in our community. We must be unified to face challenges in our country. And we must be unified to face challenges in this world. And I was reminded of a saying that Mahatma Gandhi said when he talks about unity. And he says, unity to be real must stand the severest strain without breaking. And how many of y'all understand that when challenges come, and adversary come and it attacks the relationships that you're connected to that you understand that it can press you so hard that it can crush you to the point where you don't feel like you can recover. But if you are by yourself, you can be defeated. But when we are together, we will not be defeated. And, and just as our current president got elected by, by connecting to the feelings and emotions of those who had had enough. And he created the clarion call that said, make America great again. Doesn't matter whether you thought that America was already great and has continued to be great, but he connected to those who had had enough and created this call, Make America Great Again. And so, because he created this call, and because he connected to them, then they went out in droves, joining together with each other to elect a man that I don't think is good for us. Because they, in essence, got the change that they desired. But my brothers and sisters, we too must understand that if we want change, we need each other. And we don't just need each other, but we need to unite amongst ourselves and with those who are calling for change. Those that want change in their lives, we need to unite with them. Those that want change in their community, we need to reunite with them. Those who want change in their government, we need to unite with them and cause change to happen against all odds. I say against all odds because some of us sitting here this morning may think or feel like the odds are stacked against us, but how many of you under the sound of my voice know that you can cry out and say like the prophet in Lamentations, Lord, you have seen the wrong done to me. Uphold my cause. Do I have a witness in here? And like David, we can say to the Lord, Lord, fight against those who fight against us. Amen. And God will fight your battle. And God will take care of you. Do I have a witness in here who was on your back and you thought your enemy was about to take you over? And you laid out and cried to God. And God came to your rescue. 
and God fought against those who were fighting against you because God will fight your battle and God will take care of you. And so my brothers and sisters, one thing about change, You can only create change in a family. You can only create change in a church. You can only create change when people have become so frustrated and when they have become so desperate that they have said within themselves that enough is enough and my brothers and sisters their enough is enough is the clarion call for all of us to unify and to organize people for a common cause or a common purpose to create the change that they desire and because I'm reminded of when the Israelites had been taken into captivity and they had been forced all the many years to make bricks without straw. But only because they were taken into that captivity because of their own sin. And, 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 and they went on for years and years. And while they hung in there, it took all those many years for them to say that enough is enough. But by the time they got to their enough is enough, God already had a ram in the bush. And when they had got to their enough is enough, God had prepared the ram and sent him back to Egypt. And because the Israelites had finally gotten to the point that enough was enough, that whenever the ram spoke, the Israelites joined in because they understood that they needed each other and they were ready for a change to occur. And so sometimes God has to put us into a position or a situation whereby we have to learn to put aside our petty differences and that we have to learn how to repent from what people have done to us or we've done to others and that we will learn to forgive each other and to unify until finally we say that enough is enough and we are going to unify to find a cause that benefits our community. And my brothers and sisters, Psalms 33 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so my brothers and sisters, if it is good and it is pleasant for us to dwell together in unity, then why are we stuck on this culture of oneness? Why can't we get together to unify ourselves, to educate each other? Why can't we unify and get together to fight against brutality? Why can't we unify and get together to fight against the killings in our community? And why can't we get together and unify to fight the drugs in our community? So why can't we get together to unify to fight the political injustice that exists? And why can't we uni get together and unify to educate people about the educational process? And to me, my brothers, that is very important because a lot of our people are getting left behind by the very educational system that is designed to teach them. And, and so, my brothers and sisters, we have to understand that this is not an us versus them. It is an issue of us versus us. Because if us get together we can bring about change. Do I have a witness in here? If us can get together, 
we can right the unrighteous. Amen. If us get together, we can put in office who we want. If us get together, we can take our old people out of poverty into wealth. Amen. But if us get together, we can take care of ourselves. Amen. And so, us versus us, if we get together, we can bring about change. My brothers and sisters, but it won't be easy. It won't be easy. So if you know anything about our history, you know that where we are right now is not easy. It was not an easy road for folks to march and get beat upside the head. It was not an easy road to get attacked by water hoses. It was not an easy road to let a man spit in your face and you don't do nothing. It wasn't an easy road to be called words that you wouldn't even dare call each other today. It wasn't easy to take the abuse that I don't think I was designed to take. So I'm glad I didn't come around during that time because I had come around, I'm more like a Nat Turner myself. I can't take it. So it's not easy. But the bottom line is this, just like our ancestors, if you hang in there and you don't think, change will come. Do I have a witness in here? Because when you've done all you can do, and it seems like it's never enough, and you've given it your all and all, and it seems like you can't make it through, just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Do I have a witness in here? Has there ever been a time in your life when you've done everything you can do and the clouds start rolling over your head and all you can see is darkness all around you and you don't know how you're going to get out of the situa situation that you found yourselves in. Drugged out in a back alley. Prostituted out back over at a hotel that nobody can call the name. Smoking pot and sneaking out the back door. Smug sneaking into a liquor house and tiptoeing back to the house. But if you hold on and hold out, your change will come. And I can understand, David, whenever David says, the Lord is the light and my salvation of whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even my enemies and my foes come upon me to eat of my flesh. They stumbled and what? Fell. Because though and host shall encamp all around me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this I will I be confident. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart and I say wait, wait on the Lord because the Lord is the one who goes out with you to fight you against your enemies and when he fights against your enemies it is the Lord that will give you victory do I have a witness in this house that whenever they turn your backs on you at your job and they talk about you like a two-cent dog. You don't have to worry about it. Live it all to God and stand and wait on the Lord. And be of good courage because he will take care of you. And so my brothers and sisters, we need each other. And so I just want to close by saying, instead of running away from challenges, unite and run to them. And when you get to them, don't be still. Run through them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stand on your feet all over the church.
You know, the reason that a lot of cultural oneness exists today is because most of us, or a lot of us, or some of us don't know the one who brought all of us together, who died on Calvary, whose blood flowed until the very depths of the earth to save us from all of our sins. The one who unified all of us, the one who on Calvary that had the clarion call when he died and when he said it is finished. And because he said it is finished, darkness has no more control over us. Death does not have victory over us. And so we can't come together or understand that we need each other until we first understand that we need him. Amen. Amen. 